My name's Natasha and welcome to Talk of the Town. Now I'm sure you're thinking by my surroundings, oh my goodness, has Natasha gone into the Big Brother house? I'm here to inform you that sadly, no I'm not, but I am in one of my favourite London attractions. Can you guess? Well, I'm actually in Madame Tussauds and I'm having a great time here. We've got an after hours exclusive with some celebrities that you'll certainly recognise at home. So keep watching, be for you. <laughs> I'm thrilled to be sitting with someone who I admire deeply. He's a radio presenter, come voiceover artist, as well as DJ. He's DJed for some amazing celebrities such as the Beckhams, Elton John, and many, many others. I'm thrilled to be sitting with the one, the only, Tommy Sandu. Tommy, welcome to the program. It's a pleasure to have you here. How are you today? I'm really good, Natasha. Thank you. It's, it's nice to be here. And look at where we are as well. I know, Madame Tussauds. Have you been before? No, never been before. And I, honestly, I, I, was, I was just saying it a minute ago, I find it a little bit weird. I find it weird looking at all these waxworks. This Gandhi is looking at us right now behind the camera. Gandhi is watching this interview. And he's watching his, waving a stick at you. You yeah, know exactly, that, don't you? Exactly. I feel like, and next to him, Nelson Mandela next to him as well. It's, it's unbelievable. So who, who's your favourite so far? Out of all the ones that you've seen, who, well, who's the favourite waxwork? I tell you, Helen Mirren looks re amazing. And Johnny Depp looks amazing. Uh, Jennifer Lopez, amazing. Mm -hmm. um, Julia Roberts was amazing. I found out they're all, they're all friends of mine. They're all hanging out. <laughs> they're, just, they're just on the other side of that wall. They're you know, just chums. They're all buddies of mine. I'll, I'll be back in a minute, guys. <laughs> yeah, you, you get a drink without me. I'll be there in a sec. All right. <laughs> Tommy, I can see you taking a rather big shine to our one and only Lewis Hamilton. What's going on? No, it's, it's not that I'm taking a shine to him. I respect him uh, as, a, as a Formula One driver. I'm just trying to get his watch off his wrist. <gasps> Look at that. He's got his designer watch on oh. there. And also, I'm thinking, this is the man that goes out with Nicole Scherzinger. Yeah. I, I envy you, and so does every man watching. You are a lucky, lucky man. <laughs> well, let's keep going around, because I'm sure there are a lot of celebrities that you want to see. So, Tommy, how does it feel to be standing next to the most powerful man in the world? He's tall, isn't he? He is. Look at that. I thought I was pretty tall. Look at that. I'm like 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, so, he's, he's got to be in 6'5". It's amazing. I know. Do you know what? I'm tall for this, he got, and I'm feeling like a dwarf for the first time in my life. <laughs> Look at that. He, no, no. This, this is the man. This is Barack. Uh -huh. That's a big deal. This is probably the closest I'm ever going to get to him. So, uh, should we go for a burger? Yes, we can. <laughs> All right then, Tommy, tell me something. You're a very, very, well, you're incredibly popular in the radio industry as well as media, media <laughs> yeah. industry as a whole. So, Tommy, being an Asian, how did your family adjust to you wanting to go into the Asian media? Because normally most Asians tend to be doctor, dentist, accountant, lawyer. So what did they think about your decision to go into DJing and, you know, radio? Well, I think, I think, my, uh, I think my mum still hopes I am going to be a doctor. I think she sometimes thinks it could somehow still happen. <laughs> It can't, Mum. Let it go. Let go of the dream. Um, no, it's um. I kind of fell into media in a, in a weird way. I was always into performing arts and drama when I was a kid at school, so I was always doing that kind of stuff. And then I was, you know, I, I love music, so I was DJing. So I fell into DJing. I played one little club at university that led to more clubs at university. So the DJing was brilliant and I played to thousands and thousands of people every week and then that's where you get your buzz of audiences and live crowds and you think I like this yeah. this is good for me I feel good in front of lots of people mm -hmm. and talking to lots of people and playing music for lots of people mm -hmm. so the DJing then led into a love for music and making music mm -hmm. and then I started and then I was offered through various contacts in media and things like that to do the music to Blind Date mm -hmm. and so while I was doing the music to Blind Date uh, the phone call came from the agent at the time who said look they're looking for a voiceover mm -hmm. Why don't you just try it? You know, I'm one of these people, that, as, as many people are, like, I don't like the sound of my own voice. You know, mm. other people's voices sound a lot nicer. So I, um, I put my voice down on a CD. I was in a studio anyway, so it sounded nice and good because it was recorded well. And, and they went for it and they liked it. So, you know, our Graham, the traditional our Graham, moved over. Mm -hmm. And, and I slotted on him in the, in the new role of the voiceover. Yeah. So then that then led to presenting and led to me kind of getting the other little contacts. And mm -hmm. it's funny how it kind of turned out. So I didn't really say to my parents, I'm going to go be a presenter. Mm -hmm. It just sort of happened. <laughs> So how are we finding Beyonce then? Loving Beyonce. Can't believe this. This is what she would look like. This is our girl. This that's is what the, our girl looks like. That's the famous booty. That's mm -hmm. the famous pose. Yep. I think we look quite good together as well, don't we? I think we do. I, I could be like <laughs> Jay-Z. I mean, Tom, Tom Z. Tom Z, no. really? Somehow, somehow the waxwork has given me a dirty look. <laughs> 
somehow <laughs> she, I can sense saying, go away, get your hand off my way. So what's your favourite Beyonce track? I do, I'm obviously crazy in love, it is massive. That's where I, I, I fell in love with that, that sound, that track. But also, um, If I Were A Boy mm -hmm. is lovely. Her ballads are great as well. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a slow R&B song kind of type. Okay. You're just chilling in the car, you know, that kind of music. Of course. And what's your favourite Beyonce dance move? Can you please demonstrate for yeah, our viewers at home? I've got this one, I've got this move, I've got, I've got that move like that. Uh oh, you know that, mm, that, that leg business, I can do that as well. Yeah, yeah, I've got an outfit at home, you should come out. I apologise to our viewers for that, but we had to see for ourselves what sort of dancer Tommy Ooh. was. Tell me some juicy gossip. Give my viewers an exclusive, something that they don't know about you. About me? Yeah. Oh, God, there's not, there's not. Unfortunately, I'm quite boring. And I, you know, I was always, I, um, what, what can I tell you about me? I did, because uh, I did all my kind of drama at school, I was trained in flamenco for two years. I oh, suppose wow. nobody really knows that. Okay. Um, so, I did, so I love my dancing, I love my music. No, I'm, I was quite good. I was a prefect and then I was head boy at sixth form. So I was, you know, when other kids were going off around the back and smoking at 16 years old. You're quite a Sharif Mundi. No, weren't you? Uh, well, I, ju I just got, I enjoyed school. I enjoyed languages. I love, you know, English literature at school. I love German mm -hmm. and I love, as you can tell, I love talking. Mm -hmm. So, and I like people. So it's just, uh, I'm not, there's nothing really that juicy to tell you. I love music, love life and, and I, you know, enjoy it to the full. So uh, tell me, how does it feel to be in the presence of the man, Bob Marley? This is amazing. You know, these are people that we never get to meet. Mm -hmm. So it feels quite cool. I, I feel the need to break into a Bob Marley song. Are you going to join me? Uh, I'm a bathroom singer. You, so pretend this is your bathroom, right? Let's close your eyes, uh, go to your bathroom, mm -hmm. keep clothes on, and go. <laughs> and it, could you be loved? Oh yeah, and feel love. Sing it, Bob. Bob's Bob. not feeling your love. Bob, Bob, sing your line, man. Yeah, he ain't, he ain't feeling it, is it? Tell me, is this what you look like in the morning when you're hosting your show? Yeah, I do. And then once I do my hair and I fix myself up, I, I look all pretty like this. Okay, give my viewers a celebrity exclusive then. Okay, in terms of who? People that we've met and known and, and or people that we've that come you, across? Yeah, that we've come across, people in the industry, you know, because our viewers are constantly interested in, you know, what effect, you know, various functions, award ceremonies, and all, you know, this, you know the premieres that we have in London. We, we give them exclusive here on Talk of the Town, you know. We're not some era gera type of show. No, no. We like to give them the best. So I've got you on my show, and I'd like to know from you, yeah. what is an exclusive? Who's, who's good, who's bad? Who's a bit of a miser? Who's, you know, the nicest person? in Bollywood you've ever met? Oh, okay. Bollywood, um, I suppose one of, the most, one of the most interesting stories I came across was um, Amir Khan, mm -hmm. um, his nephew Imran Khan. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking to Imran Khan about I Hate Love Stories. And Imran Khan said that Amir Khan threw a party at Imran Khan's house without him knowing it. <gasps> he got back, he got back from home, he got back from a party, he was, he, no, he got back from a trip abroad and there's a big party in Imran Khan's flat. And he goes, he's got a little flat in Mumbai. And he says, what's going on? He goes, he's gone inside and there's all these directors and Subhash Guy and all these, uh, all these various other people in the industry. And he says, going, Namaste Ji and Sasikal Ji and you know, Salam Alaikum Ji to all the different people that he's meeting. He thinks, what's going on? Then he sees Amir Khan mm -hmm. and he goes to, and he goes, so he goes you know, to his uncle, yeah. what's, what's going on? He goes, yeah, he goes, I thought we'd throw a party at your house. And he goes, well, what? I don't understand. He goes, you've got a much bigger house, a lovely house. Why are you doing it mine? And Amir Khan goes, you know what these Bollywood types are like, they're going to trash the place. So I thought I'd get the keys to your pad and he threw it at Imran Khan's house. So there you go. Wow. How about that for a bit of goss? Well, I'm impressed. You know what they say, while the cat's away, the mice will play and exactly. all that. Yeah, <laughs> while, while the cat's away, your uncle will play. Do you know what I mean? Your cha-cha, your Ma mama, mama will come around your house and take advantage of your empty... So, you know, double locks. If you've got a, if you've got a dodgy uncle, put double locks on your house, that's for sure. take on the real champ, Muhammad Ali. See, if I was a boxer, I'd have to fight him. I know, but then the afro kind of like, mm, yeah, you know, gives, gives him a bit of an edge over you. He's probably heavier than me though. Well, let's put you on the weights and see how close you get to Muhammad Ali's career weight range. Muhammad Ali's career weight range. Yeah. Oh, oh, I mean, Ooh, he's, he's a super heavyweight, guys. Oh, yeah. Come on then, it, are we ready? This is what they do, they do. <laughs> but are you floating like a butterfly, no. seeing like a bee? Exactly. I've understand, from, I've heard along the grapevine that you've DJed for some incredible celebrities, including Posh and, De Posh and Bex, yeah, yeah, that's right. uh, Elton John, yeah. and a couple of other celebrities. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot, a lot of, it's been nice because the clubs that I started off DJing at were all in the West End of London, all in central London, and um, you know, from, it's all the kind of China Whites and the Mavidas and all those lot. So all these kind of people hang around, like Noel Gallagher's kind of gone in at the clubs, you get you know, 50 Cent in the club, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, you know, 
it's great. It's great to kind of see these people just kind of partying and hanging out. Have you started culturing them in the desi vibe? Have you started throwing a bit of Bhangra and Bollywood at yeah. them? Yeah, well, see, back then it was, you know, the only track I was really playing was Mundi or Kabachka. He was a standard one. Like, <laughs> let's get Punjab BMC. Let's get some PMC on there. Everyone knew that one. And you'd see all the kind of... Even, the screen and the lights even, off. Yeah. Even white people like all doing their own little kind of version of it of uh, of their bhangra moves, and that's great. But but then I was playing more house and R&B, mm -hmm. and you know you have to fit the music policy of the club. Mm -hmm. But uh, now I'd, I think I'd school them a lot more. I'd throw in a lot more Bollywood if I could. Okay. And what's your favourite Bollywood song at the moment? Oh wow! I, I would struggle to pick one. Okay. I love, and I'm not just saying because we we're just talking about it, but from I Hate Love Stories, there's Jab Milatu is, for me, because I do the breakfast show, uh -huh. it's got a real feel-good factor, and uh, you know, all of me and my production team are just, Jab Milatu, do 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 Everybody just kind of, it's just, do, 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 and in the morning, that's kind of what I want to It hear. kicks out your day. Yeah, yeah, and of course, I love all my classic Bollywoods. I love all the stuff from, uh, from Kabi Kush Kabi Gum, I love all the feel-good stuff from, uh, any most Shah Rukh Khan films, I'm a massive fan of the music. And who Who's your favourite Bollywood actor and actress? Okay, actress, standard, Karina Kapoor. I just, I, and I know a lot of girls will go, oh my God, I can't believe like Karina. There's so many more beautiful women out there. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that Kajal is beautiful. I can see uh, that, yeah, Ashwari is beautiful. But just something about Karina. And, and, you know, I told Karina that when I interviewed her as well. well I think I scared her a little bit because I was quite intense. Oh, like, right. Karina, I'm a big fan. <laughs> Karina, you understand, you understand I'm a big fan, Karina. <laughs> I love you, and, and I think I weirded her out a little bit, uh, mm. so I'll know to tone it down next time. That I, makes two of us then. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and, and actor-wise, actor Amita Bachchan, because of the history and the growing up, the Minder again, because of the same history, but current one, I think, you know, I, I, do, like, I do like my Shah Rukh Khan films. Every, everyone seems to be a winner. How do you find the waxworks here today? Oh, God, you know, like I said, when you, when you, it's strange because it's like you've frozen time uh -huh. and you just get to go real close and just look them in the eye. I mean, you might meet them and you might meet them at other places, but here you just get to kind of really get close and then you want to kind of turn and go, what do, <laughs> what do they feel are like? Real? Yeah, exactly. So um, it's, 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 it's nice. It's nice to see them. And you do that whole kind of, oh, they're taller than I thought. Uh -huh. Oh, they're slimmer than I thought. So it's, it's a way of getting up close and having a good old stare without being creepy. Or, okay. just a little bit. or being called a stalker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Getting arrested. Okay, Tommy, I'm going to ask you one last question. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of girls will be like taking a deep breath at this moment because it's going to be a little bit of a personal question. Right. Are you single? No, I'm not single. <laughs> I got locked down, man. Oh, the, the wifey, yeah, no, I'm married. Uh, and and only, only for a year, we're going to be married about a year. So well, congratulations. Thank I you. know it's a bit late, yeah. but all the, be, you know, all the best from us, any, all the same. But I know a lot of female fans oh, out on. there are probably going to be like, no, no, oh. no, no, no. Yeah, no, no. thank God. There's, there's they another, might be doing yeah, no, no, right. style. Yeah, right. Uh, no, I, no, I'm, uh, v v lo no, I'm quite enjoying marriage because everyone, everyone does a whole kind of thing of like, oh, what's marriage life like uh -huh. and all that. It's, it's great. Yeah, honestly, I'm a big, I'm, I, if I can be a fan of marriage, I'm a fan of marriage because it's, it's nice, you know, when particularly in, in, in our business, you're mm -hmm. a presenter as well, you know, it's like you meet so many people and it's nice to have someone that you go and tell it all about and she's in a management accountant so she's got a very different mindset to mine oh, wow. she's like she's, she's got, serious yeah. unlike us well no she's not serious she's insane but <laughs> she i'll tell her that to her face Sorry. no right <laughs> but but she's 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 fun and but she's she's very organized and i'm quite kind of mad and crazy my life moves in mm. in very different ways and i'm sometimes in the country and out the country i host travel shows and gadget shows and and radio stuff so it's it's bonkers but it's nice to have someone who's more who can bring some organization and structure to my life. So she's, she's great for that. She's, she's a good mate as well. We love you. He loves you. Just, just let me have it for a minute. Go on, yeah. have it. It's yours. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Wembley. Thank you. Thank you, Commonwealth Games. Thank you, Olympic Games. I'll see you in 2012. We've had a brilliant first half of the show, and we've got even more lined up for you in the second half. So keep watching Be Free Music, because we're going to be right here in Madame Tussauds, London. October in Saturday box office. Entertainment gets unlimited. Adi 